Thank you so much for having us here. And I'm honored to be here, and I have had the pleasure of speaking at Winthrop Hospital in the past for Nurses Week and representing mollysfund.org in their endeavor to teach the community about skin cancer prevention and early detection. And I'm very pleased to be with Kristen today, who is my co-researcher in this project that we did here at Winthrop. So um, we we're delighted to do this presentation together. And um, so this is a quality improvement initiative and pilot study that we conducted. We had two control groups and four intervention groups on med surge units at Winthrop Hospital. So thank you to all of the nurses and administrators who allowed us to do this and helped us with this project. And we hope that at the end we can facilitate this to go hospital wide. And really, I know this day is concentrating on nursing research, but I think it's actually celebrating the bedside nurse, because the bedside nurses are those nurses that are most important to our endeavors of patient education, patient safety, patient care. So all of us in the room that are involved in nursing, obviously we're nurses, but some of us are educators, some of us are researchers, some of us are administrators, but really what we have to do is assist, as Mary has in her unit, um, to have the nurses feel empowered to do what they want and need to do and have good satisfaction in doing that. <clears throat> and Farmingdale staff, um, they did a great job with their nurses in getting them to have the, those initiatives with the bundles and empower them to do what's important in nursing. So Kristen and I are trying to have this endeavor with skin cancer education for the nurses that they can assess the, nurse, the patient's skin upon entry to the hospital and say, oh, look, you have sun damage and you need to address that. And if something is troubling, they can refer that to the physician. So we wanted the nurses to help us with this and that's what we've been doing. Um, so really what this is about is health promotion and disease prevention. And that's what nurses are all about. I mean, that's what we should be about, right? And that's what Obamacare wants us to be about. And that's for the health of our nation. We want to decrease cancer prevention. So the objectives that um, we'll talk about are just to outline the quality improvement and pilot study that we did. And because skin cancer rates are just at epidemic proportions and people are dying, and um, we, need, we can stop that. We can educate people and stop that. Young women are dying at astronomical rates and they are going tanning, especially Caucasian women. They're going to tanning salons, they're cooking their skin, and they're having melanoma as a result of that. So we can educate people to not do those behaviors. We have to change their behavior. People are still seeking the tanned look. They want to have that tanned look. So as nurses, we can role model our behavior and teach them about liking the skin that they're in, loving the skin that they're in, so they don't feel the need to change that. People sometimes now are saying, okay, I won't go to a tanning bed. I'll just get a spray tan. But along those lines, they're still wanting to have a darker skin tone. So they think that it makes them look healthier and, and more tan, and, and they like that look. So we have to sort of change that mindset of just being healthy. Um, it's difficult to change behavior. And um, I've used the skin analyzer machine to help change behavior where they can see the ill effects that, that tanning will do to their skin. It increases wrinkling. It increases the loss of collagen in your face. You get a sagging face like mine. Those kinds of things that can happen. You get age spots, you get freckling, and you get skin cancers. So if they're going tanning to try to look better, we can teach them that going tanning will make you look worse. So those kinds of things. Tanning beds are classified as carcinogenic, and Australia has outlawed tanning beds. We are trying to do the same in this country, but meeting with resistance, because tanning salons are a billion dollar industry. So money is power, and that's what happens. But as nurses, we can make a difference. We can educate and screen for skin cancers. As we all know, that the biggest cause of skin cancer is sun exposure. But like I mentioned, it's also the tanning salons. And people that seek the tanned look tend to do double duty, right? They tan outside and inside. And uh, sometimes these tanning salons will use um, marketing endeavors. They'll say, oh, you need to have a baseline tan, a base tan before you go away so you won't get burnt. 
and that really doesn't protect your skin and any tan is unsafe, okay? So it doesn't protect your skin. They're just saying that to market their product. What happens is the, the sun's rays will change the DNA of your skin. And over time, you can get different skin cancers. You can get basal cell, squamous cell, or melanoma. Melanoma is the worst one. It metastasizes very quickly. And if it's not caught early, you will, the person will die. And if it's caught early, there's a 96% chance of survival. So as nurses, our job is very important. If somebody sees something that's a changing, a mole that's changing, or this is a new spot, or this is itchy and I don't know why, and the nurse is evaluating that patient's skin on admission to the hospital using the Braden scale, then she or he can say, oh, well, let me point this out to your doctor. And when the doctor comes in, you make sure to tell him that. The nurse can document this and be really proactive in helping to screen for cancers and also teaching the patient at the same time. It won't take extra time because they're assessing the skin anyway and just say, you need to stay out of the sun. Use clothing, use a hat, protect yourself. So if one frequents tanning salons, you're going to increase your skin cancer rate by 75%. Cancer deaths in young women are such that um, ages 25 to 30 is the leading cause of cancer death in young women. Just let that sink in for a second. Leading cause of cancer death in young women. And it's second only to breast cancer when you're a little bit older, 30 to 34. Okay, a person dies every hour of skin cancer. So this is the only cancer that is increasing in its rate of frequency in our country. Australia has stopped their increase in, in rate of skin cancers by having a national campaign of making uh, tanning beds um, out of business, illegal, right? And um, having all children in school, they can't go outside for recess without a hat, long sleeve shirt, sunscreen, the whole bit, they have to stay inside. So they, and they have shade structures and they really protect the community and they've, they've educated the community by commercial. So it was a whole national campaign and they have now started to decrease their skin cancer rate. So um, as I said, one person dies every hour from skin cancer. And I'm also, I volunteer with the molliesfund.org and they lost their daughter at age 20 to melanoma, okay? A college student came home said, Mommy, I don't know what this thing is on my thigh. And her mom didn't know and said, well, let's go to the dermatologist. Lo and behold, it was a melanoma and she died. And, you know, it, it's, so, it's so terrible, you know. And we live on Long Island. We live with all the, the beaches and the wonderful opportunities that we have. But just seek shade and protect your skin. That's the message that we as nurses need to communicate. We teach people to not smoke. We teach people to use seat belts, to wear bicycle helmets, etc. Teach safety, teach health, teach uh, proper eating and exercise. We also need to te teach them to protect their skin, which is their largest organ. Um, the Surgeon General has, has realized this epidemic and has established a call for action against skin cancer. And that was, uh, I think, the summer of 2014 that that started. Now, 50 years ago, they started that with smoking. And then they put those uh, labels on the cigarette packages, you know, how bad smoking is for you. And they keep, we keep on butting our heads up against this tobacco industry who's now started the e-cigarettes. Right? So now we're still doing the same things with the tanning industry because they'll say, oh, no, no, it's really good because people get depressed if they don't have that light, which, you know, give me a break, okay? Um, they'll say, no, people have to get a base tan before they go away. It will actually protect them. It will give them vitamin D. All of those things are incorrect. The American Academy of uh, Dermatology, the American Cancer Society, and um, American Pediatrics Association all say, Get your vitamin D by a vitamin and foods, not by going out in the sun. The purpose of this was to strengthen the physical assessment and decision-making skills of the nurses with regard to skin cancer lesions and from them to be able to distinguish between benign and cancerous lesions. In addition, um, strengthen the nurse's ability to conduct careful history taking and patient teaching. Like many cancers, it is genetic, so that's an important factor. Nurses also need to evaluate the skin of all patients admitted to hospitals. That's what we do. 
So therefore, um, we are in an ideal position to educate patients about skin cancer and recognize skin lesions and refer the patients to the physician for treatment. Um, as magnet nurses, um, it is, it, it really is our endeavor to promote research. Um, it would benefit the community to implement skin cancer prevention and education and screening. So we, I believe what Dr. Moran said, we've always been a magnet hospital without the recognition, but now that we have it officially, it really is our duty. So as nurses, one nurse's potential impact, okay, via education and screening, um, nurse, pa nurse patient ratio does vary, but this is just an example. If um, you have one nurse caring for eight patients per day, three days a week, that's 24 patients, and times that by the 48 weeks that you're working a year, um, you have 1,152 patients per year. Times your nursing career, you're up to 34,000 patients. <laughs> but it's just an exa you know, just the importance of the impact we do have as nurses. We were speaking before, there's, eight, was, there's 1,800 nurses here at Winthrop, so if we can impact 30,000 patients, each one of us, you know, we, I'm sure we could save a, num a number of lives. Dr. Victoria Siegel was kind enough to let me join in with her with this investigation. I helped with um, implementing the, um, the test that we, we gave out. The methodology included um, six medical surgical units using a pre and post test quasi experimental and control group design. And what I did, I went to the, the units, all nurses that were involved in this study, they received a pretest to assess their skin cancer knowledge and the role to, of the nurse. So two of the units were designated as control groups and they, re they received pre and post test. And we had four units that were designated as the intervention units and they received pretest along with a lecture a Vimeo cli clip that was a 30-minute Vimeo cli clip about um, skin cancer prevention and a script to use with educating patients. And they also got the post-test. So the tool we used was um, for the pre and post-test um, has been used in previous studies in, uh, since 2009. Um, it was modified slightly for this test that we had at Winthrop and it consisted of 39 Likert scale items. Um, the Kronbach Alpha standardized score was 0.95, so it did, this test is a highly uh, reliable test. I did want to add that while I was collecting the data, one of the groups did have to drop out, so we only really had uh, three intervention groups and two control groups. Um, but being a novice investigator, you kind of roll with it, and I did, I did learn a lot just imp by implementing these tests. So the first research question that we had was what knowledge of skin cancer, some protective behaviors, role in nursing skin cancer prevention do nurses report? And we used descriptive statistics to analyze that question. And what we found was, unfortunately, the control group was, in fact, different than the intervention group. And um, we, we didn't, you know, cherry pick you know, well, we want you, we want you, we want you. It was a convenience sample, and whoever, whichever unit said they would be willing to help us, we said great. Um, but it turned out that the control group actually tended to be about 10 years older than the intervention groups, which were interesting. So we believe that they had more knowledge and more experience as nurses and just more knowledge as, as people. So we didn't have... Um, the kinds of results that we would have hoped for. However, there, um, so there were no statistically different results in the role of the teaching between the control and intervention groups with respect to ability to teach about some protective behaviors and the role of the nurse. And the lowest scoring survey items for the control subjects were 37, 39, um, which was recognition of the dangerous moles. So the control group, th they didn't receive the education, right? So they didn't feel as um, competent in recognizing these lesions and moles, whereas the intervention group did. So that taught the intervention group something and made them feel more confident in their ability to assess this person's skin, you know? And we don't mean to say that 
nurses should be diagnosing these skin cancers. That's not our purpose, but just we know normal and we know abnormal as in physical assessment. So um, we want them to just assist in, in telling the patient that is abnormal, let's refer this to the doctor, okay, and have further evaluation. The second research question would, do nurses in the control group and treatment groups differ on their knowledge? And, uh, uh, and ANOVA was done for that. The group responses were pretty similar. The control group units um, differed with respect to the distribution of responses on nine items, and in general agreed more strongly with the, uh, the survey questions. Again, we think that was because of their experience as nurses, which is we know as experienced nurses how valuable experience is. The third research question, how do nurses compare on the pre and post within the control group and treatment groups on their knowledge of skin cancer, some protective behaviors, and the role of the nurse in skin cancer prevention? Uh, prevention. A non-parametric analysis was used to analyze this question. And the pre to post difference, our results were in the intervention group, 17 items out of 39 were observed to have responses um, consistent with increased knowledge and roles from pre to post. So that was nice that we saw that change. Um, of these, only three items had statistically significant, but there were increases in the other items. So you got to take what you can get, right? So, um, and the, the three items, we'll go through what those were. The item 28 was some forms of skin cancer spread to other organs, so they understood metastasis with melanoma if you were in the intervention group. I am able to teach patients about the CDC Sun Protective Guidelines, which are very simple, stay in the shade, wear a hat with a wide brim, use sunscreen if you don't have shade, and clothing to protect yourself, and sunglasses. Those are the CDC guidelines. So you can say this to your patient very easily, very quickly, as you're assessing their skin, their largest organ, and you can prevent skin cancer. Um, and we talked about self-efficacy earlier with the group from Farmingdale. This is self-efficacy. This is empowering the nurses, as Mary did with her groups. This is saying to the bedside nurse, look at the differences that you can make. Because nurses are frustrated. They feel like all they're doing is giving meds and being on the computer charting. So if they feel like, hey, I'm making a difference. I'm teaching health promotion and skin cancer prevention every single day. Hey, that's a good thing. You go home and you're happy, right? Um, the third item, item 33, was I'm able to recognize the difference between benign and potentially cancerous moles. So the intervention group felt stronger um, and, you know, able to do that. So as we learned from the study, um, the nurses increased knowledge, as Victoria sh showed with the results, uh, and the ability to uh, assess skin cancer lesions. Um, also, the nurses uh, increased comfort level in obtaining uh, patient histories and conducting patient teaching. Um, we suggest here that more education is uh, needed to assist nurses in distinguishing between different lesions. And um, one of the ultimate goals is uh, perhaps this, this could be expanded to all Winthrop nurses um, involved in educating patients. Victoria said it, it's, that's our job when the patient comes in to check their, their initial assessment of skin. We're right there, and that little gap can be huge. We could fill that little gap in, and um, as nurses, we can provide this education and screening for skin cancer prevention um, upon admission to the hospital. And we can make a difference. We really can. And as magnet uh, leaders in nursing, um, it is our duty to share this with our patients. And we just wanted to thank everybody. I want to especially thank Victoria for letting me join her in this little journey. It was a great beginning for me. And um, also the nursing staff that um, it was, I know it's not easy. It was just another test and post-test that they had to take, but I w really wanted to thank all the nurses that um, were a part of this study. And um, our biostatistician, she was awesome, Melissa uh, Fizari. She's not here, but we wanted to thank her for the data analysis. And I especially wanted to thank one more person was the research council. Thank you guys for pushing me along and learning more about our profession. Thank you. Thank you.